Intervals are the way in which musical distance is measured, and half steps are the unit of measurement. The number of half steps between one note and the next determine the interval between those notes. And this holds true whether these notes are played melodically, one after another, or harmonically, played together. Pythagoras, who gets most of the credit for the discovery of intervals, discovered them through divisions of strings. He found that dividing strings into certain ratios, 2 over 1, 3 over 2, 4 over 3, etc., produced sounds that were higher than the given fundamental of the string, and gave names to these specific intervals. All intervals can be thought of in terms of a mathematical ratio between the frequencies of the two notes, but for our purposes, it is easier to understand them in terms of the number of half steps. Classification of intervals. This is where most people get confused, because it's not exactly straightforward. All intervals are made up of two components, a number and a quality. The number is simply the amount of letter names between the letter name you are on and the letter name you are going to, with the starting letter name being one. So for example, C to D is a second. You would count C1, D2. C to A is a sixth. C1, D2, E3, F4, G5, A6. This numbering system is independent of the quality of the interval. Any kind of C to any kind of F will be a fourth regardless of the accidentals or quality of the interval. And this is also independent of the number of half steps between the two notes. Any C to any F is a fourth regardless if there is three, four, five, or six half steps between them. That will make more sense in a second. The other part to an interval is its quality. Intervals are broken down into five qualities. Three are common, and the other two are more rare. The three common ones are major, minor, and perfect, and the two less common ones are augmented and diminished. The unison is easiest to learn. It has zero half steps between them. It is just the same note twice. C to C is a unison. The perfect fifth has a distance of seven half steps. C to G is a perfect fifth. The perfect fourth has a distance of five half steps. C to F is a perfect fourth. The perfect eighth, also known as the octave, has a distance of 12 half steps. C to the next C on the piano is an octave. The next kind of intervals are major and minor. Seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can all be major or minor. As a general rule, minor intervals are one half step smaller than the major intervals. A major second is made up of two half steps, and a minor second is made up of one. A major third is made up of four half steps, and a minor third is made up of three. A major sixth is made up of nine half steps, and a minor sixth is made up of eight. And a major seventh is made up of eleven half steps, and a minor seventh is made up of ten. Before going into the last type, let's first talk about diatonic and non-diatonic intervals. Diatonic intervals are those that naturally occur within the major scale. All of the intervals we have talked about so far, in one way or another, are within the major scale. Perfect fifths appear here, major thirds appear here, minor sevenths appear here. You get the idea. Non-diatonic intervals are those that don't naturally occur within the major scale, such as this. Augmented and diminished intervals are almost always non-diatonic, with one exception, the augmented fourth. The augmented fourth naturally occurs between the fourth scale degree and the seventh scale degree of a major scale. The sound of this interval goes by another name that I'm sure you've all heard of, the tritone, and is considered the most dissonant interval of all. But for the rest of the augmented and diminished intervals, we also need to understand the idea of enharmonic intervals. An enharmonic interval is one that is written two different ways but sounds the same. For example, this interval and this interval sound the same, but they're written differently. Really, all that is happening is that the major second is being stretched by a half step, and thus, augmented just means to stretch by a half step. Any major or perfect interval that is stretched by an extra half step is referred to as an augmented interval. These two intervals sound the same as well. But the minor sixth is dragged down by a half step and is made smaller, and thus it is referred to as a diminished sixth. Any minor or perfect interval that is dragged down by a half step is referred to as a diminished interval. So all this theory is great, and it will help you identify intervals you see written out on the page, but it doesn't do anything to help us memorize the sounds of each of them, and I think the sound is actually the more difficult one to learn. For example, what is this interval? Could you figure it out without a reference? I'm sure a good chunk of my audience already can, but if not, how do you go about learning how to do this? The best and easiest way to do this is to memorize the sounds of intervals based on sounds you already know, such as the first few notes of songs you know very well. For perfect intervals, I use these examples. For 
major intervals, I use these. For minor intervals, I use these. And for the last remaining interval, the tritone, I use. But instead of using these examples exactly, I would recommend using songs that you know well. This will work much better than trying to use songs that you are not familiar with. Descending intervals can be done in a similar way, each with their own song examples. Or you can simply just sing the ascending interval first and then sing it backwards. Speaking of ascent and descent, let's look at interval inversions. These inversions are a very useful tool to know. By inversion, I just mean reversing the direction of travel between the notes. C to G upwards is a perfect fifth, but C to G downwards is a perfect fourth, so the fourth and the fifth are inversions of each other. And there is a quick and easy way to figure out any inversion. Anytime an interval is inverted, the number of that interval plus the new number will add up to nine. So for example, the inversion of a second will always be a seventh because 2 plus 7 equals 9. The inverse of a fifth is a fourth because 5 plus 4 equals 9. The qualities of these intervals will also change in a predictable pattern. So major intervals will become minor, minor will become major, diminished intervals will become augmented, and perfect intervals will stay perfect. So the inverse of a major second is a minor seventh. The inverse of a major sixth is a minor third. The one interval that reflects onto itself, at least in sound, is the tritone. The written interval will become its enharmonic equivalent, and augmented fourth will become a diminished fifth. All of the intervals we've discussed so far are within one octave, but intervals can keep going past the octave. The numbers just keep going up past eight. A ninth is an octave plus a second, a tenth is an octave plus a third, an eleventh is an octave plus a fourth, etc. When the intervals start to get really big, they're usually just referred to by their one octave equivalent. A distance of three octaves and a third may just be referred to as a third or a tenth to stop people from having to count out a major 24th or whatever that number would actually be. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. Also, we've had our first patron. Shout out to Alex for supporting the channel. If you'd like to check out my Patreon, it's in the description.